But if I do tank two, right? If he goes for two, then I can just go for three on the next turn. Trade. Master Donosaurus comes in, probably kills me in one. I trade, and we win. Hey guys, it's Soundrack, and welcome back to Jurassic World: The Game Site H. It has been another very long break since the last video, obviously. I said I would play off camera and do like some more projects and whatever, but I lied. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys gotta come to expect this from me, especially in more recent times. So I did log in before this episode a little bit just to collect a couple of things, right? But since it's been so long, we have got a couple of cool things to hatch. Let's first hatch our Ichthyo Stego, which is a brand new amphibian. I got this guy quite a while ago, actually. He'll slot nicely into this place right here. We'll just feed him all the way to level 10 since I have so much food. 404 health, 154 attack, a fairly decent legendary creature. And did you know that its name in Greek for is fish roof? The Ichthyostega has lungs as well as gills, so like a lungfish. And of course, how can we forget about our... Uh, I think this is the third land VIP creature, the Mastodon... Mastodonsaurus. I always put another syllable after Don. I always say Mastodontosaurus. That's not quite right. It's Mastodonsaurus. We'll put him right here next to the Panasaurus. Even though it is an amphibian, so probably shouldn't go there. But whatever. At level 1, Mastodonsaurus has 864 health and 270 attack. We'll level this guy all the way to level 10. It's a little bit costly on my food and I'm down to about 4 million, but that's still quite a decent amount. 1,296 health, 405 attack, a very decent creature. Ooh, I can put hearts on my creatures, that's pretty cool. And did you know that Mastodonsaurus means breast tooth lizard? It gets its name from the rows of conical teeth. Fairly cool, we also have level 31 Tapijara waiting to be evolved, and that is obviously done. We will now level up this Tapijara all the way to level 40. Meaning it is ready to hybridize, but we do not have Monosaurus, so we'll have to wait on that project for now. We'll collect these two, I'm not going to read the facts, but that is a decent amount of bucks, as well as a little bit of DNA back from our investments. And as for putting new things in hatchery, obviously I'm not going to be around for quite a while. Let's actually start off by hatching a Zijian Gopterus, which we can slowly get towards level 30 with the next couple of additions. And in the 10 buck hatchery slot, let's put in a legendary creature. We can actually hatch blue, which would be pretty cool. Or another Ichthyostega to make a level 20. Or another Shinosaurus to make a level 20. I feel like blue is probably not the play since we do have a couple of carnivores. Yeah, okay, I'll hatch the Shinosaurus. Two days, 10 bucks. It's nothing too crazy. Code 19's out, but I'm not going to do that for now. And today, I have been saving this battle event for quite a while now, actually. Ever since it first came out, I always thought, man, we have to do this in a video. I can't possibly just do the battle event as its own thing. It doesn't really work. So, if we go over here to our battle menu, the first ride Jurassic Tour. Now, this is a gyrosphere event. And if you guys don't know, if you guys don't know what a gyrosphere event is, I mean, come on, man, you're living under a rock. It is an event where you get to pick a team of, I believe, five or six creatures. And you have to battle through five battles, but your team does not regenerate. So if they die, you cannot use that creature anymore. And if you lose all of your creatures, you're out of the ride, okay? So it's pretty high risk. This one is free. Usually it costs like 250 bucks. Sometimes the event takes more bucks. Uh, and I mean, you get to use some pretty cool creatures that I will not have for a very long time. So. That is an opportunity and a half. We're going to pick Metri along here. has the most stats. Over here, probably Giga Kylocephalus. Oh, I mean, definitely Giga Kylocephalus again. Oh, we really, really, really don't want any more herbivores. But I'm probably going to have to take Iguana Sutures. Please, just something non-herbivorous. Oh... It's rough, man. Okay. Four herbivores. Four herbivores. It's not the best draft. Um, the first one is going to have two carnivores. Oh, man. 
it is a little rough. I'm gonna hit it with these guys. Now I do think Metriolon cleans house here. Luckily the first battle was extremely easy. Now if you guys didn't know there was actually once a time where you could glitch a gyrosphere event. Oh man, look at the map, that's so cool. It looks a lot better now. It used to look completely different, I believe. I mean, it might have just been the device I was using back then. But this battle map absolutely looks much cooler than what I remembered. So, I mean, Velociraptor Gen 2 is going to take a good chunk out of Metriolong. But we shouldn't lose too much more health considering Ophicomimus barely has any attack. Maximum amount of damage you can do is 180. Which it will go for. We'll be on 2003 health with, with Metriolong. Well, we get through the first battle relatively scotch free. No creatures lost. Two carnivores is kind of concerning though. I really, really didn't. I didn't want to take four herbivores. Usually you want a nice even spread. Like if you want one herbivore, maybe two carnivores, a couple of a pterosaur and amphibian, that would be pretty nice. This battle is pretty good though. We have two pterosaurs and a carnivore. I can probably rely on Metriolong to take out the Carnoraptor. Yes, something like this. This should be fine. We can get our Giga Kylocephalus to take this guy out in one hit. Force him to switch into Kynoraptor, take 600 damage, and hopefully finish it from there. Really, I shouldn't be playing this aggressive, but if I make a mistake, I could end up tanking quite a lot of damage, so I'd rather take like these small shots. 600 damage is a lot though. Is gonna go for it. That is going to hurt a little. We're gonna go for two. And I will probably have to tank 600 more damage because Tropiagopterus uh, will have two. Hopefully it doesn't go for it, but chances are it will. It, it doesn't. We get a free pass. So there we go. Giga Kylocephalus takes the win. We only lose 600 HP there. So first two battles, actually, I believe is very has been very successful for us. Uh, we've only lost... I mean, we've lost fairly little ex uh, HP, sorry. Manage team. Use cash to heal and swap your creatures. Ah. Okay. Like, if I want to switch this, I can heal him for 50. Nah, I mean, obviously it's 400 HP. I'm not going to do that. But I might consider it later on. So, I mean, this one's a little bit rough. Right, so if I start with Giga Kylocephalus. Uh, I'm going to start with Metriolong. But Metriolong might die, which would be a pretty big problem. And then we'll go with Guanus, which is Giga Kylocephalus. I'm not going to lose, but I really wouldn't. I, I really don't want to lose Metriolong here. Let's go for a block, actually. We're going to play it very safe. Hope that the bot goes for two attack. Which it doesn't, but that's not boding too well either. One block, okay. Now if it goes for two attack, that would be the dream. It does. Now we can go for two. Metriolong will die. I can go for one block or one reserve. I think I'm leaning one block. Uh, they'll have three on this turn if if Paki. Ceratops goes for two, that, uh, for three, that's two going through, 500 or so damage, 700 damage in this case, that's gonna hurt, yeah, okay, that is gonna hurt quite a bit, that's dead, two block, and now Metrilong is basically just a decoy going into the last two battles, Pachyceratops doesn't go for four, we've been saved, we've been saved. It could be four block, in which case I can lose Metriolong here. I'm gonna play it safe. It was two block, so I could have had it done there. I might have to take two then. Okay, that wasn't that wasn't a very good play. Metriolong is down to 635 health. I, if I went for four there, I could have killed him. But at the same time, if it didn't go well, I think we played it safe. We did well. We're on to the second last battle now. We are so close, so close. What I'm gonna do here is actually fodder off Giga Kylocephalus. And I'm gonna, I mean, dude, we haven't had to use Dracos Ceratops just yet. I don't really wanna lose too much HP on this guy. 
But since in the last battle we can only take three creatures anyways, what I plan on doing is just letting Giga Kylocephalus and Metriolon die. Oh, but I probably shouldn't have put Metriolon in second, yeah. Mm. Wasn't exactly the best decision, actually. What I might... Nah, but, I mean, look, even if... I might not, I might not even have to die here. Do we think we can do this? Can we get away with this? Okay, that's pretty huge. Five, it will have to go for five. It will have to go for five here. Alright, so... Giga Kylocephalus is... Alive. I think I'd rather save health... On, uh... Draco Ceratops than... Swap. Even though the switch would might have been better. I don't mind if both of these guys die in this battle, though. So that's three. Giga Kylocephalus takes a good chunk, but, I mean, we're still rolling. It has one block. Two doesn't kill it. We have to go for three, and three reserve. Now, Terra Quetzal can't kill Giga Kylocephalus in one, so it might not go for anything. It doesn't go for anything. We finish the battle with Giga Kylocephalus. Draco Ceratops remains at 100% HP. That is massive. It looks like we've won. Uh, this Jarosfu battle was actually way easier than I thought, but let's not speak too soon because if the last battle is all three carnivores, we're in a little bit of a pickle. It's three amphibians. I actually think we are okay. Let's go. Let's, let's get it. Let's get this bread. Three amphibians against three herbivores. It's fairly evenly matched. I really don't want to tank two. But if I do tank two, right, if he goes for two, then I can just go for three on the next turn, trade, Master Donosaurus comes in, probably kills me in one, I trade, and we win. Right, so we go for that one reserve. Coolosaurus might, uh, Coolosaurus, sorry, might go for two. It goes for two. There we go, there it is. Now, question here is, do I just trade and play, like, the base case? It'll have two, it'll go for one, Giga Kylocephalus comes in with three. Okay, so what I'm going to actually do here is two block, one reserve. Coolosaurus with two, goes for two again. That's huge, actually, because now it... Iguana Sutures kills it in three. One reserve. And I think we've basically won here. Because Mastodonosaurus comes in with three or four. Is it three or is it four? It's three. Has to go for two. Which means that it will only have one reserve. Or one block, sorry. And here comes Giga Kylocephalus. We have five. It only has one block. Mastodonosaurus dies in three. One block, one reserve, and Draco Ceratops should be able to finish it off. It doesn't matter what uh, Op Optoceraspus does in this situation. It's done. And we win this Gyrosphere draft. I mean, dude, if I drafted all carnivores, then we would have been completely screwed on the last one. But I think this one was kind of made for you to win. As like an introduction to Gyrosphere draft, you start spending bucks on... Try not to spend bucks on the cheap ones. It's probably not going to work out very well. But anyways, we did win this one. We will get the reward. The big Gyrosphere draft pack. Now there is a chance of getting a rare hybrid here. That would be very nice. If I could get a rare hybrid, I would really love a Tappy... Uh, a Tappy Jalosaurus, I think it is. That would be very nice. Please. It's a common hybrid, but it is a... Labyrinthosaurus, it is the best common hybrid, so I'd much rather take that than like, I don't know, an Alangosaurus or something, which I can make fairly easily. We'll take it, it's not the worst, uh, it certainly wasn't the best thing that was there, but for a common hybrid, I will definitely take that. Now let's take a look at some missions or something. Uh, this goal has not been reached, unfortunately. This one has, we're gonna get this for free, basically. I didn't I did not contribute to this by the way. Twin carnivores pack, we get two irritators and two hundred bucks. We do not turn our nose up at three bucks. As well as double loyalty point rewards. Oh man, this is just so nice. Four herbivores at level 31, okay. So yeah, I mean that one's a little bit of a struggle, but we should be fine. Complete battle stage 40. Uh, I'll do that some other time. 
and collecting the coins. Okay, that's probably gonna happen off camera. So, I mean, there we go, right? Let's put something in the evolution chamber before we go. What should it be? What should it be? Velociraptors? Yeah, we're on our way to level 30 Velociraptor. Might as well stick that guy in and that will be going in over time. I don't really want to make any more rare level 40s just yet. Tabby Jara is kind of up there, but nothing too crazy. I really should have focused on the herbivore, actually. <laughs> Maybe that was a mistake. Who knows? So, I think we can pretty safely end the episode there. It's fairly late anyway, so I kind of want to be getting going. If you guys have enjoyed, once again, as always, please remember to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in future streams and videos.